The same problems reared their ugly head yesterday as the Blue Jays lost the series opener against the Minnesota Twins. And a report came out that if they don't shape up and if they don't figure out what's going on here, that they might be sellers at the deadline. And we've been tooting that horn for the past few weeks, and it may come true. So we'll break that down and much more on this episode of Jays Digest. What's up, Jays fans? I'm your host, Peter Vrionis, alongside host, host Nick Goss. And uh, by popular demand, I'm now at Ebbets Field for today's episode. I'm Mr. Worldwide, apparently. I was at the Rogers Center yesterday. I'm at uh, the demolished Ebbets Field today, even though it looks pretty good behind me. Uh, but let us know which stadium you want to see me in next. I think we're going to keep doing this because it uh, seemed to be a pretty big hit and it allowed you guys to be distracted by the performance of the Jays in the past few weeks. So let's try to get a new field for every episode. So uh, leave your comments down below. But Nick, some reports are swirling that the Blue Jays may look to be sellers at this year's trade deadline. We've been accepting that as a real possibility. If you were to tell me that before the season started, I would have said that was worst case scenario. That's a total disaster. And right now it looks like we're heading into that direction because the division seems to be out of reach already, just 40 games into the season. I mean, the Baltimore Orioles and the New York Yankees are playing fantastic baseball. They cannot be stopped right now. And the Blue Jays are hovering around that 500 mark, but ultimately they're going to have to be in the mix for a wild card spot if things don't get too out of hand. And, and right now they just haven't been able to pick, in, to, to pick up wins and – I don't know if that's going to change considering the opponents that they have coming up. It's not really going to be a light schedule to, to put it that way. So Nick, this is an interesting report by a very notable Blue Jays insider and it could legitimately happen as well. Yeah. And it's good that we can get some light out of the Jays losing. Uh, but yeah, the top comment, let us know the stadium is the top comment will change. Well, Peter will fly out to that stadium and go there for the next video, but let's just get right <laughs> into it. Um, so it started a few, like about a week ago with Ken Rosenthal and then Ben Nicholson Smith tweeted out or an article yesterday, but Peter basically was MLB insider pegs Toronto Blue Jays as possible sellers at the 2024 MLB trade deadline. And it was Ken Rosenthal. He theorized the Jays could look to move off Vladimir Guerrero Jr., Boba Shett, Kikuchi, and Chris Bassett. Now, shout out to Sports Illustrated for misspelling Guerrero's name in an article, but it was... Um, it was very interesting when this article came out, and he basically said that the team I'm watching really closely is Toronto because they seem to be reaching a crossroads. At some point, this team either needs to play better or needs to make some hard decisions on the players they have. And he specifically noted one guy, which is Yusei Kikuchi, because he's on an expiring contract, currently boasting a 2.94 ERA. That was before yesterday's start, in which he put up an absolute masterclass. Like, Peter, there's a lot of guys here, and obviously Kikuchi's the pending free agent, pending UFA, so that's the biggest potential trade chip. But when you look at guys like Vladdy, Bo Bichette, Romano, all these guys, they're getting closer to free agency after 2025. And if they don't turn it around soon, they might have to recoup some assets. I wouldn't say they're going to – and that's what the Ben Nichols Smith article goes into. I don't think they're going to go for a full rebuild, but a retool at the very least. Yeah, well, you, you just look at the options on this Blue Jays team right now, and there was a window for them to get something done. We've been using this term, the three-year window, when they made the Dalton Varsho trade last year. I mean, that was it. They had three years to try to get something done because they weren't able to in a couple of prime years of Boba Shett and Vladimir Guerrero in, in years prior. So this was their chance, and, and they had an opportunity to beef up this lineup in the offseason. They failed to do so. Maybe they didn't believe in the players that they have in-house right now. So that's why they didn't go out and get the, that big-time asset. That's why they didn't sign someone to a seven- or eight-year deal. I'm not letting the front office off the hook. I'm not doing that, but maybe that was their thought process. You know, yeah, we're going to say all the right things in the media. We're going to say that the belief internally is there, but at the end of the day, I don't think it was. And and the Orioles won 100 games last year, and they're only scratching the surface. The New York Yankees went out and uh, got Juan Soto. So you look at those moves within your division, and the Jays were automatically pegged to be at best, the third the third place team in the division. I think that's what I predicted heading into the year. Orioles were going to take a step forward. Uh, the the Yankees were obviously going to take a, take a step forward, and now they're doing it without Garrett Cole in their lineup. So imagine when he comes back, how much of a force they're going to be. So I, I just don't know if the Jays have the weapons to compete in the AL East. 
And I don't know if Cody Bellinger or Jorge Soler or any other free agent that wasn't Shohei Otani was going to help with that. So maybe that's what the Blue Jays front office is looking at. And yeah, at this point, it is going to be better to recoup some assets. But you don't want to sell for pennies on the dollar either at the same time. You, you got to look at it that way for the Jays front office. Like we saw that trade package the other day for Vladimir Guerrero Jr. It was um, Joey Loperfito and uh, – and De Bruyne, uh, Corona something, Kenny Corona, an, an outfielder. And Loperfito was like the centerpiece of that deal. He's the same age as Vladdy with 15 at-bats in the major leagues. So, yeah, you want to retool and you want to recoup assets if you don't think this core is going to compete in the next five to ten years. But at the same time, you don't want to just give them up for virtually nothing. And that's what some of these trade packages are proposing. So, yeah, try to gouge these teams if they need these players. But you got to wait till the deadline and you got to wait till they're truly desperate. And that's where you're going to get the most out of Vladdy and Bo and all the other guys that are rumored to be traded. Yeah, Vladdy's turning it around now. Luckily, he's looking like the not fully the old Vladdy, but a bit more of a less of a shell of himself. But this is what Ben Nicholson Smith. Uh, article was yesterday. He said, for now, the Jays likely hold as the summer unfolds to learn more about their team, their record, underlying performance, all these things. Ideally, they'd rebound and buy. Yet, if they continue playing like this, they'll have to consider selling. And Peter, I want to go over a couple things here because he posted in the article a few different scenarios. And I'm just going to ask you which one you think they uh, should go for and which one is most likely. So the first one, there's four. I'm only going to include three here. And we're going to, I'm not going to read all of this out, but essentially the first one is that they play it out. And the case four is that basically you play it out, hope for some of the uh, rebounds and continue happening. You bounce on luck and things like that. You kind of hope that they get back to their 2021 self. The other option is you double down, which means you go out and you buy at the deadline. You add a guy like Brent Rooker, Ryan McMahon, Gavin Sheets, all these different guys. Maybe even Jesse Winker is having another, I guess, breakout year following his brutal year last year. Or the kind of the end is the full teardown, even though according to Ben Nichols and Smith, this seems very unlikely and counterintuitive, given the fact that they just renovated the stadium and all this. What do you think the Jays should do? Full teardown, double down, or play it out? Well, I think what they're going to do is play it out. And that is because of the renovations. They seem to be more preoccupied with uh, getting people in the seats and putting a half decent product on the field as opposed to, you know, truly spending the money and, and truly going all in on this core because that's what they've been selling to us the past few years. Been Vladdy and Bo are going to take us to the promised land and, and that's where we're headed. But it hasn't happened as of late, and it, I don't think it's ever going to happen with those two guys as your centerpieces. So Gavin Sheets, I mean, that's is that really someone that's going to take the Blue Jays over the top? Brent Rooker, I know he's been uh, starting off the season like a house on fire, but we saw him do the same thing last year, and then he ended as a league average hitter. So those guys are not going to be the ones to bring your ball club over the top, and they might make a move like that just to – sort of satisfy the the fan base in the short term and put a band-aid on a gushing wound but i i just don't know if i believe in this team i, I really don't and i'm trying to find the optimism nick but we're almost 40 games into the season now and i don't see any signs of them turning this thing around or or turning it around to the point where they can be considered a force if they manage to get to the playoffs so it, like, I want to remain optimistic because we, we still got to cover this team every day and we hope that they win. But what I've been seeing lately and, and just the early returns on this season, not sold. Yeah, I agree. I think they play it out. Maybe they double down if they get hot, but I doubt it. I think they're going to play it out, maybe make small additions like they have the past really four years at the but, deadline. But, Nick, let me, let me ask you this. Like, okay, if they do double down and they go all in, like what? What's the move? What is the move? Is it multiple moves? Is it one move to try to maybe smooth things over? Like what? What do you do if you're Ross Atkins and you're insanely doubling down on this core that that has not performed this season? I don't know because any of these names at the bottom, none of them really make the Jays a better team than even the Yankees or the Orioles. I don't think at this point because, like we've been mentioning the whole time, for the Jays to be World Series contenders, Vladdy had to improve, Bo had to improve. You can't really buy that, so that's why. I mean, I agree with you. It's not. They shouldn't do it. I just don't know sometimes what goes on with Ross Atkins. But I don't know. Any final thoughts, Peter? It's a The Jays play in a couple hours as the time of recording. Yeah. Maybe they'll win if you guys are watching after. But uh, for now, it seems like they might be on the trend towards sellers. But we'll have to wait and see ultimately. Yeah, well, they've dug themselves a really big hole 
so far to start off this year. And I, I don't know if the Orioles and the Yankees are going to regress to the point where they open that window back up for the Jays. So that's when you have to do some self-evaluation. And I know it's, it's easier to just hold on to your players and have a decent product on the field so you could still have people in the stands and, and your renovations aren't totally useless to the point where no one's in there. But at the same time, you got to figure out what's best for the future of this ball club. And right now, what I think is best is trying to get the most that you can out of the assets that you have because they've tried it with this same group. They've made a few minor tweaks over the years, but it's largely been the same core that has been entrusted to bring the Jays to where they want to be ultimately, and they failed to do that. I think time is running out. I don't know if they're ever going to bring the Jays where they need to be. So for that reason, I think it's best to sell. But like I said earlier in the video, if you have to sell for pennies on the dollar, you don't do it. But I think Ross Atkins needs to be smart with his asset management. If someone is offering you two top 30 prospects in the majors for Vladimir Guerrero Jr., maybe you think about it because it, it could be worth it and it could kickstart a new core that, that might bring the Jays to the promised land where this core was supposed to bring them and they weren't able to do that. Yeah, all this core talk makes reminds me of the Toronto Maple Leafs core, but that's for another day. But that'll wrap it up. Let us know what your thoughts are on this. Would you want them to be sellers given what we've seen? And if not, why not? Thank you guys for watching. And which field? And which field do you want me at next video? Let us know. Top comment gets it, and we'll see you tomorrow.